Welcome to the demonstration series on managing ICX using SmartZone for SmartZone Release 5.0 and ICX Firmware version 8.0.80. In this demonstration, I'll show you the configuration steps to allow SmartZone version 5.0 to manage Ruckus ICX switches running firmware version 8.0.80. I'll cover the configuration steps required on the ICX switch and within SmartZone. I'll also discuss the services that must be available in order to permit management. So let's get started. Uh, first thing we'll take a look at is our smart zone. Uh, here I'm running a virtual smart zone essentials edition. There is no difference between the essentials edition and high scale edition. In relation to this functionality, high scale is just a more fault tolerant and a more advanced version of what you get from the essentials platform. But from the perspective of what we're talking about here, there'll be no difference for you. First thing we'll look down at the version down here in the system info, we have version number 5.0.0.675. This is the first GA release of the 5.0 uh, software for Virtual Smart Zone and for the appliances. And this is one that introduced this new tab over here that we haven't had before, uh, the switches tab right here. So when we click on the switches tab, this is the default configuration of the switches tab. I don't have any switches discovered yet, uh, but what we see here is uh, we have some hierarchy and uh, by default, there's a default group that switches go into. Uh, we'll talk a little more about groups as we go forward here, but for now, uh, right now, it's a default configuration with the default group under the default system. And that's what we'll be trying to get our smart zones to talk to and, and get them working in smart zone here. But before we can do that in smart zone, we have to do some configuration work on our switches. So let's take a look at the switch. So our switch here is an ICX 7150. Uh, it's just a single unit, it's not a stack, although stacks can be managed by SmartZone as well. Uh, in my lab environment, I just have this one switch right now for us to do this demonstration, but the steps are pretty much the same. Now, a ICX switch can be configured to communicate with SmartZone through two methods. Uh, one is through DHCP option 43, where option 43 of a DHCP response to a, a client request would provide a list of IP addresses that are the known smart zone uh, devices that the switch should reach out to and send an active query to try to connect to, to be managed by smart zone. And we're gonna do this the manual way. So before we start talking about what configuration is required to actually initiate a query from the ICX switch to smart zone, let's just take a look at my configuration on this switch and let's look at the version. So we'll run the show version command here and take a look and what we'll see is that we're running a uh, software version 8.0.80. Uh, this is a uh, this is a non-production release of this firmware that I'm running right now. Um, that's really irrelevant to you, but the GA release for 8.0.80 is not out yet, and so this is a pre-release demo version that I'm using to be able to show you this demonstration. Uh, but you'll see no difference in behavior when the official version re release comes out. Okay, so now that we're looking at the version, we've confirmed we're running 8.0.80, which is again required for smart zone management of ICX switches. The smart zone has to be version 5.0 and the switch has to be at minimum 8.0.80. So let's take a look at our running config just so I can show you a little bit about what the switch is configured for now and a baseline for it so that uh, we know which things are gonna impact what we're trying to do in communicating with smart zone. So here's our running configuration. Uh, I have uh, AAA authentication configured for logging in. Uh, it's booting from the primary, which is router code. I have a DNS server configured. Uh, the DNS server is used so that I can actually reach the NTP server. And uh, that brings me to an important point. NTP is a really important piece of the ICX configuration, as well as the smart zone configuration. You want them synced to the same clock so that logging and information that's shared between them uh, will match and timestamps will be accurate. And so that your reporting will actually be more useful to you. I also have a Telnet password configured on this, and that's important to point out because when Smart Zone connects to the ICX switch, it establishes several SSH tunnels that we'll get into a little more detail as we uh, look through some of the things once we establish connectivity. But it establishes these tunnels and communicates to the switch using some tools, uh, using Telnet, using SNMP uh, to SNMP to gather information about the switch, Telnet to make configuration changes to the switch, and things like that. So uh, having passwords on here just proves that SmartZone will still be able to communicate with the switch, even though I have 
basic configuration protections to keep my switch safe. You know, some environments are going to require some very strict security, uh, and we still need to be able to maintain that security from any other access to the switch besides that of smart zone. Uh, then you'll see uh, SZ disable, so smart zone communications is disabled on this switch right now. Uh, so there's no communication or no queries going out from the switch to try to reach smart zone at the moment. This is just our interface configuration. Like I said, I have router code configured on here, so I have an IP address configured on port 1. Uh, I've disabled uh, PoE on these ports, irrelevant to what it is we're doing here, but you're seeing it on the screen here, and I just want to explain that out. And I'm also running LLDP. So LLDP um, is useful because in SmartZone, SmartZone uses this LLDP information to help paint a picture of other devices that might be connected to your switch, including other APs, other switches, and anything else that's out there in your network. So really useful information. Okay, so let's get to configuring uh, smart zone connectivity. We're basically configuring the command that's going to initiate uh, queries from the switch out to the smart zone for it to actually discover it and be able to manage the switch. So let's get into configuration mode first. So config t gets us in there and we enable this functionality with the sz active list command. And what we provide here is an IP address of servers uh, that are smart zone devices that are going to be capable of managing this switch. So we'll go ahead and put in the IP address here. So that's the IP address of my smart zone. Now this can be a list, so you can add multiple servers to this list of active smart zone devices that you want to be able to manage the switch. So we've configured that, but remember uh, earlier up here we saw that um, smart zone uh, functionality is disabled. So we'll go ahead and re-enable that with a no smart zone disable command. And now we're actively sending queries. So how do we know that? Well, let's take a look here. We'll do a show SE status. And what we can see here now is that we're in a smart zone query state. Uh, we were in a knit earlier, and we're now looking to this server that we've configured here. Uh, it's our it's our active list. We don't have any uh, learn from DHCP option 43. There's no option 43 list because we didn't have that. We have no passive list configured. So the only thing we have is this one active list IP address that we configured in there. So it's in progress and we haven't received response from smart zone. So it looks like everything on the switch is doing what it needs to do. But let's take a look at how things are looking from smart zone. So over here in smart zone, uh, we are not seeing anything yet. So let's go and look at our default group. Okay, here we go. So now we do have a switch that we've seen. Uh, it shows up as offline and it shows up in our default group. So this is the base behavior. When the switch first reaches out to smart zone uh, and smart zone, if smart zone does not have a rule on how to treat this particular device, it puts it in the default group. And when it's in the default group, it actually never goes out to establish those SSH connections back to the switch that it uses for all the management functionality. It just acknowledges that it sees a switch, but that switch is being held in an offline state. So how do we get the switch online? Well, what we need to do is we need to get in here and create a group that's a non-default group. So we're going to go ahead and add one here. We'll call this Ruckus Lab Group. It's a switch group. We can do a description here. This uh, we can say um, education example and leave it at that and click OK. So now we've got a switch group and it's our Ruckus Lab Group. So we have our switch that's showing up with a red icon showing that it's offline. We can click on this switch. And once it's highlighted, it'll give us the information it has for the switch, and we can move that switch to this other group. Now, we want to confirm that. We'll get a message, hey, do you really want to move this? We'll say yes, and we'll click that, and we'll now have moved that switch over to the other group. So it'll be showing up in this group now, and smart zone in communications of the switch is periodic communication. It's not constant, always on communication, but we can go back and look at our switch and see what things look like from over there now. So we see a message that already popped up. It says, welcome to uh, VSZ. So welcome to virtual smart zone. And let's take a look at our show smart zone status again. And what we see now is we have a uh, smart zone SSH connected. So we are now firmly connected to the smart zone switch, uh, we have different SSH tunnels. We have a tunnel that their tunnels are established. We have one for CLI access, 
one for SNMP access, and one for syslog. And our timers are no longer running because the timers are really irrelevant now because we have these secure SSH tunnels, which I do want to point out that these tunnels are essentially what is used by SmartZone to know that this switch is still alive. So it doesn't use SNMP polling, so you might have something configured that prevents SNMP from working again. Um, let's say you disable the SNMP server because that's a sure way to do that. Uh, you could disable the SNMP server, but Smart Zone would still see this switch as up and operational because it still has the SSH tunnels. Um, so that does bring me to a very important point. There are some services on the switch that you must have enabled for most of these functionality to work. Uh, you're going to need to have SSH configured. Uh, Smart Zone actually does that automatically for you in the background if you haven't configured SSH. Once, this, uh, once the query gets worked out, the SSH configuration is applied and establishes these SSH tunnels, but you need to have your Telnet server enabled. So you cannot disable, completely disable the server and have some of the CLI um, commands that get executed in the background, they can't be done for you. Uh, if you disable the SNMP server, uh, the SNMP functionality that collects port statistics and port information won't be collected for you. So these essential services have to be running for you to be able to manage your switch uh, and have all the functionality of smart zone management on the switch. So let's go back over to smart zone. So over here in smart zone, we are going to just refresh this switch. Uh, so now we're in an online status. It's collected the switch's name. And when we click on the switch in this window, we get information down here in the tabs about the switch. And I'm not going to go through all these tabs here. We have another presentation that goes through all the things you can do with Smart Zone once it's connected. Uh, this demonstration is really just how do you get this uh, system to communicate with each other and actually be able to get any management functionality out of it. But you see some good information here, general info about the switch. Um, you can do some backup and restore. You can get port information, and it'll tell you which ports are up and down and things like that. Uh, once this loads here, we'll take a quick look at that. And then I want to talk about something that's a little bit more important for us. So here we see our switch. Uh, it has 16 total ports. Two of them are up. Uh, 14 of them are down. Uh, we can see what's connected to these switches, uh, which ones have PoE enabled. Again, all this stuff is covered in more detail in another presentation, so look for that one after we wrap up here. So. One thing you noticed is I was not able to see this switch as active or manage this switch from Smart Zone until I moved it out of the default group. And I did that by manually moving the switch by clicking the, highlighting the switch, clicking the move button and moving it. Uh, there's another way for us to do that. Over here in the system tab, uh, we can click on switch settings. And once we do that, we can create registration rules. So this gives us some options. So this is gonna be our, Uh, Ruckus Lab rule, um, we'll assign it to our Ruckus Lab group. So basically this rule says if you match these items, this is the group I'm going to place this switch into, which takes it out of the default group and allows it to become an active switch. Uh, we can do this by IP address range, uh, we can do this by subnet, or we can do it by specific model numbers. Like I said, this one's a 7150, so I could use 7150 as a model number and only put 7150s in a specific group. But let's go ahead and, and create a group here. And what we'll do is we'll do, and we'll just do a range from 120 to 129. So just 10 switches, and if they get one of these IP addresses and they reach out to SmartZone and send a query into SmartZone, these will automatically put into the, uh, the Ruckus Lab rule group. So there you go. Um, so now we have that. Now we can go back over to our switch, to our switches over here, and I can delete this switch. And when I delete this switch, it deletes everything that it knows about this switch. So are sure we want to delete it? Yes, we are sure we want to delete it. We'll go over there and delete it, and we'll jump back in to, uh, to the switch, and we'll do an se disable command. So now we've disabled Smart Zone. Uh, it's already been, it already essentially got disabled when the switch disconnected from it. Uh, so the Smart Zone functionality is intelligent enough and it works between the devices enough to 
when we deleted it over here on Smart Zone, it disabled itself over here on the switch. So we want to go ahead and re-enable this. And see what happens here. So now, when this switch goes back in, it's going to send a query from IP address 192.168.1.120, and it is going to hit a rule that exists on the other switch. Now, actually, uh, we might find here that when the process of deleting, nope, we still have an active list. So we see again, uh, welcome to Smart Zone. The switch is, uh, is seen by Smart Zone Controller. So now we can go back over here to the Smart Zone and take a look at our lab group. And in this lab group, we're going to see this switch already. So we bypass the step of having to go into the default group by creating a rule in the system tab under switch settings. And we create a rule that assigns switches based on some criteria to a group so that they can automatically become actively managed by Smart Zone. So this will take a couple minutes to populate. It's based on the query interval for SNMP to get all the port status information and all of the switch name and all those kinds of things from it. So that'll happen in the background here. But the main point of this is what we wanted to show was how you configure the switch and how you configure Smart Zone to allow a switch to be able to start communicating with Smart Zone. Then you can be able to manage it. Like I said, once they're connected and everything's established, they'll establish these SSH tunnels that are used for collecting management information and doing configuration activities that are all seen in these tabs down here. But those are going to be covered in another presentation for you. So like I said, once we wrap this up in the next couple seconds here, you can go check out those and see the types of things that you're capable of doing with a switch once it's discovered by a smart zone and capable of being managed by it. Well, thank you for attending this presentation on implementing Smart Zone and ICX uh, 8.0.80 switch configuration and compatibility for uh, switch management from Smart Zone. Appreciate you viewing this and taking the time to watch with me, and hope you come back for more presentations in the future. Thank you.